Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today I'm here at Murph or Midwest Rep Rap Festival, yeah. and I'm here with Darren. He's showing yep. me his new product. Yep. I've got a, uh, what it is, it's a custom mount for the fish finder that allows you to mount your fish finder to your trolling motor so it's all one unit. And it also includes a uh, transducer, what's called a transducer lock block. What this will do, this will keep the transducer from moving around and losing position if you contact a tree stump or a rock or whatever, or the boat ramp. Uh, what's nice about it, 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 it brings this up to eye level. So most small boats, say like a uh, two-man plastic fishing boat, most people put their fish finders way down here and it's very hard to see, especially oh, yeah. when you're my age. And I like highlighting projects like this because it shows the practical uses of 3D printing. Right, yeah, oh, it's very practical, yeah. It's very durable, it's PETG. Uh, I've had it on this, I've used it now for three years, I guess, and I've yet to have one crack or fail. It's been right. very durable. And you're on the water, so I assume you've got sunlight and humidity, yes. and the, oh, the PETG yeah. holds up and yes. all through that? Yeah, it's been very well, yeah. Do you notice that like with the black PETG, I assume that like gets hotter. Yeah. I, I always thought that if I were, you know, 3D printing something in the sunlight, I'd want to make it out of like a light color. Right, right. Well, I wanted to color match the rest of the unit. Most of these are black. Okay. The, the uh, saltwater series are white, and I do have some white ones that I am selling online as well as these black ones. But honestly, the black has not been a problem. Nice. Uh, I like how you did the little logo there, too. Oh, yeah. That, uh, I don't know if you can see that little logo. Yeah. yeah. So this part is underwater, and you've just got these zip ties holding it on. Right. And that's good enough. Like, do you yeah. have, ever worry about that? No. In there? See, because it goes over the fin, so it's completely locked, and the zip ties just keep it from falling down, falling off, okay. sliding off. It, it's very secure, actually. Nice. And how big are the boats that you're putting this on? Mainly smaller boats. John boats, canoes, inflatable boats. Actually, I'll tell you a story real quick. That, that's how this came about, was I have a, a small inflatable boat. Yeah. And uh, drilling a hole into an inflatable boat's kind oh, of yeah, a problem. Oh, yeah, that's not going to work. That's not a good idea. Yeah. So I had to come up with an, a way to mount this. And so I just designed and built it myself. Do you have any other ideas for, like, printing stuff for a boat? Or maybe, you know, print a whole boat? Have you thought <laughs> of that? <laughs> That heck one heck of a printer, but yeah, there's printers out that can do it. I can't afford them, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I'm always think, trying to think of other ideas and other products. What what kind of fish are you normally going out there for? So mainly where I'm from, Southern Indiana, we mainly have bass, crappie, bluegill, small small panfish, uh, but there are some uh, musky and catfish in some lakes in our area. But that's mainly what I go for. Yeah, but, but I have sold some to some some guys down south in the southeast who do use this in salt water. What would your business look like if you didn't have 3D oh, printing available to so you? So if, if I couldn't 3D print these parts, I probably couldn't have made these parts. Yeah. Because to make an injection mold would cost way too much to prove out that there's a market for this. Hopefully, eventually, that will get you injection molding. Right. Uh, but right now, 3D printing is by far the way to go. Yeah. It seems like 3D printing is really good for prototyping mm -hmm. and like small batch production. Yes. Eventually, once you prove out the market, yeah, it, yeah. you can once invest in Once you get so many, it. you can't keep up. You'd have to have so many 3D printers that it, it cost effectively wouldn't be there. Right. But, but yeah, or in the small, say 5,000 parts or less, you got enough 3D printers. Yeah. What, what kind of 3D printers do you use? I use uh, CB, CNC Deltas, and I have Prusa Minis. Okay, Prusa Minis, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah both. That's like your main print farm is Prusa machines? Well, I, have, I have four Prusas and four uh, Deltas. Four okay. C CB, CNC, yeah. Cool. Is there any upgrades that you like to put onto those machines? No, nope, I'll stock. Just stock? All I, right. I just, I just plug it in and let it eat. Let yeah, it go, yeah. Right? My audience loves like tearing it no, apart for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just want it to work every day. Just work. Yeah. I don't care if it's faster or slower. Just work. All right, cool. Well, Darren, where can someone go if they want to learn more about your product? So, uh, trollandfind.com. Troll find? Troll and find, yep. Troll and find. Troll and find. Yep. Nice. Yep. I like the name. Yep. All right. Cool. Well, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Have fun with the rest of the show. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Right. Yeah.